fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! After a long manhunt, the Lone Ranger and Tonto captured the notorious outlaw named Red Roberts. They turned him over to Marshal Lawton in the Kansas town of Rockville, then camped in a nearby woods. About an hour after dark, the Marshal rode into the camp and made a startling announcement. Oh, 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 steady. Red Roberts has escaped. Already? Yes, he tricked the guard and got his gun, then made the guard unlock the door. He stole my horse from the barn and got clean away. I had to borrow a horse to come here. Untie our horses, Tonto. No, you do it. There's a standing reward of $500 for the capture of an escaped prisoner. We're not interested in cash rewards, Marshal. I know that. Roberts but... is tough. He must be caught before he kills again. Here, Good, let's go, Tonto. Now, be ready. Easy, city, big fella. From the Marshal's barn, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the outlaw's trail. It was late afternoon of the second day on the trail when the masked man signaled a halt at the remains of a campfire. Who's it? Who's it? Yeah, let me see. Yeah. Otto, these ashes are still warm. Roberts can't be far ahead. Easy. Oh, hello there, Hot Cow! Early evening found Tom King seated alone at a corner table in the cafe in a town called Painted Post. King was the owner of the cafe and also the sheriff. He looked up as a number of men spoke loudly. Well, look who just came in. Uh, uh, the uh, Bob uh, friend, Judge Snyder. Yeah. Yeah. How about driving out the nester? What about your promise, Judge? What's the nester paying? How about you get? What happened to our range? Yeah. 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 election, Judge? We'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. Judge Snipe, a lean, thin-lipped man wearing dignified black clothing, ignored the remarks of the cattleman as he made his way to Tom King's table and sat down. Well, howdy, Judge. I'm sorry my customers made those remarks. The remarks are proof that the patience of the ranchers is exhausted. Tom, they're tired of waiting for us to get rid of the nest. But Jim says... He has time to build a house, fence land, plant crops. I've told you repeatedly, Tom, we must drive him out if we hope to be re-elected. Furthermore, the ranchers may resort to violence. Judge, you know blame well there's no legal way to drive Sage out. Yes, I know. And I told you what to do. Catch Jim Sage breaking the law. Any law. Uh, Arrest him. When he's brought to trial, I'll hand down a prison sentence. 
I'll offer to suspend the sentence if he agrees to move away. His wife can't work the farm alone, so he'll have to move. I've had my deputies watching, Sage. He's not breaking any law. Your deputy. Judge, I talked to Slim and Lefty just before you came. I don't know if it'll do any good, but I told him I'd get new deputies unless they found a way to jail Sage. Well, I hope they took you seriously. Well, they're over there at the table under the oil painting, and I'd say they look mighty serious. I tell you, Slim, it made me sore when Tom King threatened to fire us. Getting sore won't help, Leslie. But Sage doesn't break the law, so how can we catch him? It's like pouring a drink from an empty bottle. Tom King expects the impossible. He's worried, Lefty. He knows he'll be licked at the next election if the nester's still here. That'd hurt. Tom thinks more of his sheriff's badge than he does his cafe. Hey, Slim. Look who just came in. Who? Red Roberts. He's standing beside the door. Sure enough. He's taking a chance from coming to a public place. He's wanted by the law. Yeah, he's wanted in Kansas. I reckon he figures he's safe here in Texas. He's looking this place over mighty careful. Yeah. He sees us. Slim, I just got an idea. We'll try to get Red to go to Sage's farm. We'll gun him there and blame the shooting on the nest. Oh, I don't know. We'll be doing the nester a favor. He'll be forced to move out to avoid going to jail or being hanged. That'll probably save his life. He might be killed by a cattleman if he stays here, so what? Roberts is walking towards us. Now, just leave it to me. Evening, mister. Do you mind if I sit at your table? No, make yourself at home. I didn't expect to find you two here. It's a long time since the three of us rustled cattle together. Lots has happened since then, Red. Yeah. Now you ten horns is wearing deputy badges. Yeah, we get tired of dodging the law. After we split with you, we come here and went straight. You should have done the same instead of turning lone wolf killer. If you were aiming to turn me in... Oh, of course not, Red. We're old pals. I'm only staying long enough to get a supply of grub. Oh, yeah. Need grub, huh? Yeah. Enough to last for a week or so. I got to keep traveling. Oh, that's bad. Why? The sheriff owns this place and he's a shrewd hombre. You try to buy grub to take away and he might suspect you're running from the law and ask questions. Oh. Is there a store in town? Ah, Cafe's the only place selling food. Well, I gotta stick up a ranch, huh? Now, wait. Wait, I've got an idea. You contact Jim Sage. Who's he? <laughs> That's the name he goes by, but you recognize him as one of your old sidekicks. He has a farm a couple of miles from here. He'd be glad to help you. You go look through the window of his farmhouse. You'll recognize him. I'll tell you how to reach him. Fully unaware that he was the victim of a death trap, Red Roberts followed Lefty's directions and soon reached the Sage farmhouse. He left his horse a short distance away, then walked stealthily to an open window beside the door and looked inside. When he saw Jim and Mary Sage, he muttered, I never saw that man before. The rifle shot came from the woods about 50 yards from the side of the house. Red Roberts gasped and fell to the ground. Jim Sage heard the shot and rushed out of the house, followed by his wife. They were examining the motionless figure near the window when the sheriff's deputies rode from the woods and dismounted. So you turned killer, I say. No. Get your hands up. I didn't shoot this man. Don't tell us that. Saw him at the window, thought he was a rancher, and let him have it. You're wrong. Jim didn't shoot anyone. We got him red-handed. Searching for weapons, Lefty. Right. The Lone Ranger and Toto, following the outlaw's trail, were in view of the house when they heard the rifle shot and saw Red Roberts fall. They left their horses concealed by brushwood and went closer to the house on foot. They saw Jim being searched and heard him saying, This is a frame-up to get rid of me so the cattlemen can have the range. You were at the end, edge of the woods when that man was looking through my window. You saw the chance to frame me for murder, so you shot him. Save your breath. You call yourselves lawmen. You're not lawmen. You're scheming killers. Tie his hand, Slim. Good idea. Keep him covered, Lefty. Turn around, Sage. Just a minute. What? Left. Drop the gun, Lefty. Drop it in my eye. Oh, look out. Oh, my hand. Going to draw, Slim? No, no, don't shoot me. My hands are up. Disarm him, Toto. And make sure Lefty has no other weapons. Uh, he tie their hands. Wait until they've carried Red Roberts into the house. Oh, you know him. You must be these outlaw pals. We're not outlaws. 
Whatever you are, you'll pay for interfering with the arrest of a killer. Sage is no killer. The shot that dropped Roberts came from the woods. Now take him inside. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with we. Champions are made, not born. We wouldn't want it any other way, would we? Take the story of Yogi Berra, great catcher for the New York Yankees. When Yogi was just a lad of ten, he practiced baseball even then. He learned hitting, catching, too. And this should be a cue to you. He ate Wheaties like champions do. Yogi now sparks that Yankee team. Still eats Wheaties for extra steam. Yep, Yogi Berra's been a friend of Wheaties for 19 years. Practically raised on him. He knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Yogi, sock that ball. On his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. Later, Red Roberts, alive but seriously wounded and unconscious, lay on a couch and the deputies, tied hand and foot, sat on chairs in a corner of the living room. Jim told of his troubles with the cattlemen, while the Lone Ranger extracted the bullet that had struck Roberts and dressed the wound. There. That's all we can do for him, Toto. Ah, if he'd only regained consciousness. he tell you I didn't shoot him. I believe you, Sage. Did he go get scouts, Silver? Yes, turn them and the horses of the deputies into the corral. Uh, what about Roberts' horse? I want Jim to ride that horse to a certain lawman. You mean the sheriff in Painted Post? No, I mean the marshal in Rockville. Rockville? Well, that's in Kansas. Take the horse to Marshal Lawton and tell him the man who stole it from him is here in your house. Well, I, I don't know as I should leave Mary. I... He must have a... Me get Marshal? I may need you here, Toto. Go ahead, Jim. It'll be all right. I trust the masked man. All right, I'll go. Should I mention you to the marshal in Rockville? By all means. Tell him I'll wait here for him. He'll probably return with you. Right. After Jim Sage left, the Lone Ranger and Toto divided their attention between guarding the captured deputies and caring for the wounded outlaw. The vigil continued throughout the night and the following day. After supper, Mary said, Toto said it took you two days to get here from Rockville. Well, we came in a roundabout way, Mary. Jim and the Marshal should be here tonight. But Jim won't have a horse. He rode the Marshal. The Marshal will borrow one for him. Don't worry. At that moment, Tom King pushed through the doors of his cafe, walked past the long bar, and entered his private office, where Judge Snipe waited. What's your word, Cap? Uh, I can't find anyone who's seen the deputy since last night. There seems to be some excitement in the cafe. I'll see what's going on. What's the commotion? The deputy! Quiet down! Quiet down! I can't understand when you're all talking at once. Quiet down. You, Sam, tell me. Well, a boxed-out cowhand was riding a range near the sage house. Saw six horses in the corral. And the Nestor's got only two horses. Slims and Lefty's horses are there. At the Nestor's place? Yes. Where's the man who saw them? Well, he just told what he'd seen and rode on to tell others. Tom, you're the sheriff. That's right. You got to see what's happened to the deputy. That's just what I'm going to do. I'll go with you. Hold on. We'll all go. That's the ticket. We'll teach the Nestor a lesson. Tonto was standing near the front window when the sound of approaching horses reached the living room. He looked out. He must have a yes. 30, 40 horsemen come here. <laughs> <That'll> be... <laughs> now you're in for it. They'll kill us. I've been hoping Jim and the marshal would arrive before the ranchers knew that Slim and Lefty were here. Give me one of your guns. I can handle it. No, Mary, no. Why should there be gunplay? Yeah, I hear them stopping in front of the house. They'll kill us. Oh, no, they're not killers. They're hardworking cattlemen who respect law and order. That's right, mister. They're for law and order. And when they hear how you interfered with us in the arrest of a killer, then kept us hogs tied all night and day. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Open the door. Before Tom King. What do we do? I'll open the door. I'm here, Diddy. Yes. 
Good evening, Sheriff. Boss, he captured us. Look at us, hog tied. Place your hands. Lower your gun or I'll draw. Where you Lower gun, Sheriff. That Indian has us covered. There'll be no gunplay unless you or one of these men start it. Oh, so you're going, Sheriff. If he starts trouble, the boys will deal with him. Hey, Lord, Ed. Who are you? I'm Judge Snipe. I'm glad you're here. Where's Jim Sage? Why are my deputies tied? Who's that on the sofa? And who are you? You'll have all the answers if you'll just step inside. Yeah? Ask some of the cattlemen to come with you so the odds will be in your favor. Please be. Come on, Yeah? Come inside with me. All right. The rest of you be ready for trouble. If you hear a shot, bust in fast. The Lone Ranger waited until the three ranch owners were inside the house with the sheriff and the judge. Then he said, I have one request. I'd like to keep the deputies tied until Jim Sage arrives. Why should we stay tied? You're free, Sheriff. I'll handle this. Where is Sage? He went to Rockville. I expect him back soon. The masked man sent him to get the marshal. Marshal Lawton? Yes. He's a blame good lawman. What about that man on the sofa? He's critically wounded. He may die. Jim Sage shot him. He did not. Don't argue with him, Mary. Go ahead, Lefty. Tell your story. Yeah, you bet I will. Slim and I just happened to be riding through the woods. Lefty lied smoothly, and each statement was confirmed by Slim. During the supposedly eyewitness account of the shooting, Tonto kept close to Red Roberts, and the Lone Ranger stood near the front of the room, looking through the window. Oh, that's what happened. That's right. I reckon Mrs. Sage and the masked man will tell a lot of lies. We gave you the true fact. How is the wounded man? Him dead. <laughs> Him die when Lefty talk. Then there'll be a murder charge. Jim didn't do it. Go ahead, masked man. Tell your lying story. I have nothing to add to what you said, Lefty. <laughs> then you admit Jim killed that man? You know better. Look, Jim and the marshal are here. Here? Yes, the marshal's shaking hands with some of the men outside. Yeah, let me speak to him. Hey, marshal, we can say Jim here. I'm arresting him for murder. A few minutes later, after Jim and Marshal Lawton joined those in the crowded living room, the Marshal lifted the blanket that had been drawn over the face of the dead man and said, Red Roberts. Who shot him? I told you, Marshal. It was Jim Say. That's a lie. Well, whoever shot him is in line for a reward. A reward? That's right. This crook was in jail awaiting trial for murder, but he escaped. How about that, Lefty? Unless you change your story, Jim Sage will get the reward. I'm not entitled to any reward. I didn't shoot that man. The shot that killed him came from the woods. The deputies were there? Yes. <laughs> well, we may as well admit it. You what? Uh, we uh, knew yeah. you cattlemen wanted to nest her out of here. And we knew Roberts was an outlaw killer. So when we shot him, we threw a scare into Sage. Made him think he'd hang for the shooting. He figured he'd clear out rather than face trial with a jury of cattlemen. Why? Because he'd think cattlemen couldn't hand down an honest verdict? Did you know about this, Sheriff? Well, no, I... So didn't. you shot the outlaw from ambush in the woods? Yeah, we... You thought... ornery, low-down polecat. We knew you ranchers wanted to be rid of Sage. We'd rather have nesters on the range than scheming skunks wearing lawman badges. Sure. Now, see here, Sage. You blame near got a mighty raw deal. We're sorry we elected the wrong kind of sheriff. I didn't know what the deputies were doing. You got an election, King, to change your breed of deputy. Lefty, you're fired. So are you, Slim. Search me. With a reward coming, I don't need a job. Marshal, are men who are wanted by the law eligible for the reward? The Rockville officials will have to decide that, and I doubt it. Why do you ask? These deputies traveled with Red Roberts in Kansas before they came to Texas. What? They're wanted for rustling. Well, that's cattle thieves. The worst kind of crook. So that's what we had for lawmen. They ought to hang. Yeah. And you, Sheriff, you... I fired them. I didn't know they were crooks. You should have checked on them before you hired them. What kind of sheriff are you, King? Hiring crooks as lawmen. And trying to frame an innocent farmer for murder. Did I... you think cattlemen would stand for such doings? Yes, I told you. I didn't know they were framing Jim Sage. Give me a chance. We we'll can... see how you do between now and election. Hey, Marshal... Do you think the mass man's right about Slim and Lefty being wanted in Kansas? Yes, and I'm taking them back to Rockville with me. What are you ranchers going to do about Jim Sage? Oh, well, well, he's a nester. Oh, what of it? He's a man and a citizen. He has the same right as you to live and work on his own property. But if he stays, other nesters will come here and fence land for farming. You can't stop migration to the west. The day will come when all the open range is fenced. The farmers may then outnumber you cattlemen. 
They may want to drive you off your ranches. That's when you'll need the protection of the law to protect Jim Sage today. He's talking real fast. Overthrow those laws now and your children will suffer. You confirm and strengthen the right of a man to own property, and you'll give your children a real heritage. Ed Reddit, he, he's right. I never thought of it that way. You know, I got a son growing up. I don't want him run off the old ranch by a mob of farmers. Yeah, I got two sons. I want him to raise beef. We got to have law and order. You hear that, Sheriff? You make sure that Jim Sage has his rights, and then our young'uns will have theirs. Sure thing, Judge. He stays right here. Sage, I reckon you've been given the notion that cattlemen are scheming polecats. Well, uh, that's not the case. And we aim to prove it to you. Oh, golly, I... Good. Come on, fellow. Uh -huh. That mask man sure cleared things up. He saved our farm. Jim, he probably saved your life. Well, he sure did taught me a lesson about being a good sheriff, but there's one question he didn't answer. What's that, Tom? He didn't tell me who he is. I'll tell you that. He's a lone ranger. 